Over the past few days, global stock markets have been on a roller coaster ride. Investors have been trying to assess the severity of China's economic challenges. But today, things were looking very up on Wall Street. Karina Huber has uh, been on this roller coaster ride following all the action for us. Karina, we had quite a rally today, all three major indices closing up around 4%. What's behind the wave of green? Well, Michelle, it certainly was a great day. It was the best day since 2011, and now the S&P 500 is now out of correction territory. It seems simply that investors brushed aside concerns about China, for now at least, and focused on what was happening in the U.S. First of all, we got a very good durable goods order report that came out that showed that orders for big ticket items like planes and cars and washing machines were up 2 percent in July. That was much better than expected. At the same time, we also heard uh, statements from the president of the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of New York who said that uh, the chance of a rate hike in September looked less compelling than a few weeks ago, and that's largely a reflection of all the volatility in the markets that we've seen over the past uh, a week. So uh, for people who are worried about an interest rate hike, they could breathe a sigh of relief today. But keep in mind, one day does not make a trend. And we do expect more volatility in the sessions to come. In fact, the S&P 500 could very easily fall back into correction territory. So here's a look at what correction means and what it means for mom and pop investors. U.S. markets officially entered correction territory earlier this week. That means there was a drop of 10 percent or more on the major indices since their recent highs. The sell-off at one point erased more than a trillion dollars from the S&P 500's value, shaking up investors who have seen their portfolios drop dramatically. It's certainly scary stuff, but most market watchers, like John Allison, advise that in the long term, you shouldn't panic. I would... First of all, take the view that if you have a retirement plan, you have long-term money, and you should have, be patient with your long-term money. I would take a Buddhist or minimalist approach. I would do nothing, except in two instances. If you have things in your portfolio you think are low quality, then this is the time to get rid of them. And the second thing is, when the markets go down, buy, and the more they go down, buy more. Market corrections are a natural part of the life cycle of stock markets. According to Deutsche Bank, they happen on average once a year. Until this week, the U.S. hasn't seen one in almost three years. That's the third longest run on record. According to Timothy Anderson, managing director of TJM Investments, that's because the market has been less driven by fundamentals like earnings and economic indicators and more driven by monetary policy. Interest rates are very, very, very low, uh, and people have limited alternatives as to where to put their money. And if they're looking at rates in the uh, uh, maybe the one and a half to two and a half percent range in treasuries, it, it, they can easily find uh, very safe dividend stocks that yield that. The Federal Reserve pays attention to what's happening in the stock market, but takes its cues from economic indicators. And it says market corrections rarely have an impact on the U.S. economy. The president of the Federal Reserve Bank of New York said on Wednesday, the stock market has to move a lot and stay there to have implications for the U.S. economy. What we're seeing is not a U.S. problem. This is very different from the financial crisis. Now, next week is a big one for economic data. We've got the jobs report, which everyone always pays close attention to, and the ISM report on manufacturing. Investors are hoping for positive numbers. If we don't see them, we could be in for another bumpy ride. Michelle? Oh, another bumpy ride. It's been a particularly volatile period, Karina, although today was a great day for the bulls on Wall Street. But as you know, the New York Stock Exchange invoked the Rule 48 for the third time in a row on Wednesday. And Karina, this is really unprecedented. So how does Rule 48 work exactly? Well, it's very complicated and very technical, but essentially it allows the designated market makers to avoid having to get approval from floor managers on pricing before the market opens. Usually they do have to get that approval, but in times of extreme volatility, they're allowed to bypass that step so they can get the market opening. And the idea is that if you get the market opening quicker and smoother, we can get rid of some of that volatility. But the fact that it is so rarely used, it was, it was uh, basically approved by the Securities and Exchange Commission in 2007, but rarely used, the fact that we've seen it happen three times in a row just indicates how volatile the markets have been. Michelle?
Yeah, it does indeed. All right, thanks as always. Karina Huber live for us in New York.